it is okay. Good morning once again. So, we are into the final part of this module 1. Today, we will be introducing a new concept what is called an analytic functions. Let me quickly before coming to that uh, uh, kind of analytic functions, let me quickly recall what we have done in the last two few lectures. We have introduced the concept of a real uh, the function is a complex valued function of the complex variable and then then introduced the notion of continuity. We, then we introduced the concept of differentiability. differentiability. After introducing differentiability, you have seen that differentiability is some sense equivalent to what we call it a Cauchy Riemann equations, which we call it. That is what essentially we have seen. Differentiability gives you a set of partial differential equations, and conversely, if the uh, partial differential equations uh, satisfies uh, a, a set of real valued functions u and v satisfies the Cauchy Riemann equations, uh, then the function is uh, differentiable. That is what we have seen it in the last two, two lectures essentially. Right. This if, so you have one definition of, an, so we are introducing uh, basically terminologies. If f is differentiable, differentiable in a region omega in a region omega then f is also called uh, f is also called holomorphic this is another word holo called holomorphic this is a new name another name that is all so because when you read some books you will see the notion of holomorphicity okay so Differentiability is a local concept. That means differentiability defines at a point. And if the function is differentiable at all the points, then it is called uh, a function is differentiable in that region. Okay, region. Uh, okay, and if a, this is another name of holomorphism. Now I want to define a new notion. What is called an analytic function? But the ama uh, amazing fact and interesting fact. You may not see in this module, but the important thing is that uh, you will see the glimpses of it. The concept of analytic function, holomorphic functions, differentiable functions, all uh, same in the context of complex analysis or complex number system. But the concept of analyticity and differentiability are entirely different in uh, real number system. I will indicate few things here. Okay. So, let me give you a definition. What is a definition of analyticity? Analytic. Okay. F is called the function the uh, func f from omega subset of c to c is called analytic at set naught, called analytic at z naught. Again, it is a point y. If there is an r positive, if there is an r positive such that f has a power series, f has a power series representation, power series. In fact, convergent power series. That is very important. Convergence is power, convergent power series in the open disk in the open disk b z naught r what does that mean that is f of z equal to you can write it as sigma a k z minus z naught whole power k where k varies from 0 to infinity and this uh, this is true for all z in this ball, ball of radius z naught 
center set node and radius r and this also converges and the series converges and the series series converges you see this is a very powerful thing you will see the power, power of this analytic function what it says that if a function is analytic you can return this is a nice form this is or all some sort of a polynomial z minus z naught is a polynomial so it's a kind of infinite version of a polynomial of course it's a when the number of terms here is finite then it is a polynomial and the highest k is called the degree of that polynomial but what it says that if it is analytic it has a power series representation okay and the important thing is the analyticity the important thing is the convergence and every point in this in this neighborhood so what it really says that if it is analytic at z naught there is a neighborhood of radius r and if this is z naught and every point in z your f of z can be written in this form okay okay and if f is analytic at all points at all points in omega then f is said to be analytic then f is z to be analytic in omega Okay. So that's a, we will come back to the uh, thing for ex, uh, some examples, immediate examples, which you are already seen. One is of course e power z is analytic in entire plane, analytic in C. Similarly to sin z, you have you know this expansion already. It's a you have you can expand any point you like it. Though e power z is given as, e power z is given as sigma uh, z power k by k factorial, k equal to 0 to infinity. You can also write this as, you can, so this is an exercise if you want it. You can also write e power z is equal to sigma sum a k into z minus z naught power k by k factorial you can also write this from so you can expand e power z at any point you like it this is an expansion around the origin when z not equal to 0 you get it so the standard definition of e power z is the around the origin and uh, around the origin but you can write the same expression in this form for some a k and you can also compute a k which i am going to tell you how to compute a k if you want to uh, expand e power z Similarly, sin z, cos z or all analytic. So, by definition, if you want to prove analyticity at a point z naught, you have to expand around that point. So, this is called an expansion of that one. So, the standard things are expansions around the origin. This is expansions around the uh, point z naught and you can write it or all analytic in C. But if I take it f z equal to 3, if I take f z equal to 1 over z minus z 1 is analytic, is analytic in except at z naught, c minus z 1. You see it is not analytic when z tends to tend, so you do not even have the continuity. So, this is not is analytic z1 and at z equal to z0 even is not analytic and you can have more things in particular, in particular fz equal to 1 over z is analytic, analytic in c minus 0 in this domain. So, it is interesting to that it is an again an exercise expand 1 over z 
एस सिग्मा ए के सेट माइनस एफ के इन इज एट नॉट पावर के के इक्वल टू जीरो टू इनफिनिटी यू एक्सपैंड दिस फॉर जेट नॉट नॉट इक्वल टू जीरो सो यू कैन एक्सपैंड सो यू कैन एक्सपैंड दैट फंक्शंस ओके एंड सच पॉइंट्स वेर इट इज नॉट एनालिटिक आर कॉल्ड सिंगुलर पॉइंट्स डेफिनेशन if f is not analytic if f is not analytic at a point then it is called a singular point then it is called a singular point the singular point so i don't want to say something more uh, i want to say something more about though i am not going to do it the understanding singular points and uh, its contribution towards the contour integration etc are all very very important and i'm sure you will be seeing about the various types of singular points uh, uh, in the next module when they study cauchy residue theorem they're going to use that what contributions when you have a singular point what contributions do you have around that singular point see for example for this one over z there is a singular z equal to 0 is a singularity for this z equal to z1 is a singularity for example fz equal to e power 1 over z z equal to 0 is a singularity is a singularity and on the other hand if i define fz equal to sin z by z it looks like z equal to 0 is a singularity but by defining by defining f0 equal to 1 you can remove this singular point so there are various types of singularity point this kind of singularity points are called removable singularity this type of singularity are called the pole type singularity these are called some this is a more serious singularity these are called essential singularity and i'm sure you will learn uh, the various types of singularity in the module too at least some details about that so understanding singularity is equally important in an analytic function okay so so you have plenty of functions so try to do some exercises try to expand it and then now I am going to give you a formula how to find this AK. Suppose you are given an analytic function and I will give you a proof. I do not uh, try to prove everything, but then uh, I will be doing something for you. Okay. So, I am going to derive something interesting for you immediately. So, let me do that. So let me write down again my analytic function. Suppose f is analytic, f is analytic, analytic at z naught, analytic at z naught. That means that is that implies you can write your f of z is equal to expansion. Let me write it a naught plus a one into z minus z naught plus a two into set minus set naught whole square and so on you can write the infinity and the series converges that is the meaning of when f is analytic now put a what is your f of z naught in this case now. f of z naught uh, put z equal to put put z equal to set naught when you put z equal to z naught all these terms will cancel and you get f of z naught is equal to a naught so your first term is nothing but f of z naught so this implies if this implies a a naught is equal to f of z naught so i can write my f of z take this f a naught to this side left side then you will get minus f of z naught when I, 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 z naught if i take it there uh, then the remaining terms are this one in which z minus z naught is a common factor you divide by that divide by z minus z naught you are going to see something this is equal to a1 plus 
uh, a2 into z minus z0. Now, 1 z minus z0 is taken out, so you will get it. Again, this is a convergent series because it is already converged, this will also converge and this will be a1. What does that show? When z tends to z0, all these terms will go to 0. Since it is a convergent series, as z tends to z0, this will go to 0 and you get back a1 here and you get your f prime. So, this shows that implies as z tends to z0, the limit exists in the limit exists, that is what you are showing, limit exists in RHS and hence in LHS, hence in LHS. That is what it is, z tends to z0, this limit exists which is a1 and this limit is nothing. That implies your f prime of z, the limit is equal to f prime of z at 0 is equal to a1. So, you picture your a1. So, your first term a0 is equal to f of z0, the second unknown constant is f0. In fact, I do not continue. If you study more and more about the analytic functions, you can actually prove, actually prove uh, f a k is equal to your f k, the kth derivative evaluated at z0 by k factorial. That means, it is not only that you, if f is analytic, f is, so the conclusion is that if f is analytic, so let me do that, I write it here neatly. So it is a big conclusion. So that is a theorem. So immediately you have a theorem. If f is analytic in omega, if f is analytic at z0, okay, then f is differentiable infinitely many times, f is differentiable not just once. F is, so, it is more powerful than differentiability. f is differentiable infinitely many times, infinitely many times. You can, everything can be computed from here. So, though I have not done further computations, but you can do that because you have to do some more work here to compute this. So, infinitely many times and the coefficients, coefficients, coefficients a k are given by, so a k is not something arbitrary by a k is equal to the kth derivative of f evaluated at z0 by k factorial. In other words, the expansion is given by, in other words, the expansion is given by, expansion is given by uh, f of z is equal to sigma f power k. If the, this is at evaluated at z0 by k factorial, into z minus z naught power k. So, naturally you do not get all the time analyticity. Now, I want to make a remark which I may not tell you here or nor I am going to prove here. That is something special to complex analysis and that is what you want to prove it. The differentiability and analyticity are same in the context of complex analysis. What I am trying to say that if f is analytic, you already proved that f is differentiable and in fact f is differentiable in infinitely many times. So, if f, f is analytic in a region, then f is differentiable in region, but what is amazing and interesting fact is that if f is once differentiable, then f is infinitely many times differentiable and it is also analytic. Okay. This is a very, very powerful thing and proving this converse part, you, uh, proving that f is analytic which implies differentiability is quite easy, 
but when f is just a differentiable once but that is against our thinking from our real analysis and in real analysis that is not true because even once differentiability will not give you twice differentiability and thrice differentiability but what i am saying is that in the system of in the complex number system the analyticity and just one differentiability is equivalent so proving this actually is the main part of a full course on at least the major part of a full course on complex analysis that involves uh, the uh, development of contour integration cauchy's theorem morera's theorem cauchy integral formula and then the development of taylor's theorem and then the development of taylor's expansion so end of it you want to so starting with a complex analytic fun, complex differentiable function once complex differentiable function or equivalently a holomorphic function which is once differentiable you can develop systematically a theory which involves at least a 70% of the first course on analysis to produce a full taylor series and showing that it is analytic and that's a very interesting thing just i want to complete this aspect by telling these results are not true in the context of real numbers for example if you define in the context of real numbers you define fx equal to mod x you know that this is continuous is continuous not differentiable you see you have continuity but not differentiability this is one example if you go to next f of x if i define x mod x i have to take don't write it as x square f x square f x equal to x square is infinitely many times differentiable but this is differentiable so these are all exercises for you to be as i said me doing exercise you will not learn it if you want to learn any mathematical subject you have to do the exercises for yourself if i do my exercises here i learn this better but if you want to learn better you do your exercises is differentiable is differentiable now once but not twice you see not twice so if i go along this thing if i take now fx equal to x square mod x x square mod x is differentiable twice differentiable twice not thrice twice but not thrice so you can keep on constructing so you construct in real number system you can construct a real valued function defined on a real variable which is differentiable n times but the nth derivative need not be differentiable that means it may not be differentiable in the n plus first stage and then you may think that if i if, if there is a function which is differentiable infinitely many times then that function will be analytic because the definition of analytic function is at least the same even in the context of uh, uh, real variable case a function is said to be analytic if it has a power series expansion which converges in the setup of real number system and so you may think that if f is differentiable this is your thinking it may not work if f is differentiable infinitely many times infinitely many times many times then naturally you can come then you can naturally compute my f of k at z naught at x naught this is in the real case i'm telling by k factorial in one dimension is all for in the complex number system these are all fine because once differentiability give you infinitely many differentiability and infinite differentiability will give you the analyticity but in the real case these are all real case the whole portion then you can form this one and you may try to expand this the issue is that this series still may not converge so you, even if f is differentiable infinitely many times then uh, so let me write down that exercise 
again it's a very good exercise worth trying and it, you should try this this interesting exercise you define fx equal to e power minus 1 over x square if x is not equal to 0 and equal to 0 if x equal to 0. This function f is from r to r. Show that f is differentiable, differentiable infinitely many times, infinitely many times, but f is not analytic, that is the thing, not analytic at 0. All other places you get analyticity, that is no problem. In other words, I cannot expand my f of z, you can easily prove that, okay. So, that is where you have seen various example, the notion of analyticity. Uh, uh, so, the so analytic uh, functions, differentiable functions, as I said, plays a crucial role in the uh, complex analysis and hence in applications, including singularity of complex value to functions. Now, let me give you some general things about the analytic functions and things like that. So, we start with some various notions. First thing what I want to do is that the polar form of Cauchy's Riemann equations, polar form of CR equations. So, I am go going to tell you few things, few general things about all this. Going to deduce now whatever you want to understand, there are much more to study here, but what we have done in this module 1 is the minimal thing and then you will see few more things in the module 2. So, let me call you my function. So, my uh, suppose fz is analytic, what is Cauchy Riemann equations I want? Cauchy Riemann equations u x y plus i e x y. So, recall my polar coordinates, what is my polar coordinate? x equal to r cos theta, so let me hold, y equal to r sin theta and then, so I can replace x and y, of course, r square equal to x square plus y square r square equal to x square plus y square and theta is equal to tan inverse of y of x. So, so I can write f, so, suppose z is equal to r e power i theta. So, I want to write down my polar form. So, f of r, I want to see everything in terms of polar coordinate. f of r e power i theta is equal to u of r cos theta r sin theta plus i v of r cos theta r sin theta. Okay. So, I want to do that. Okay. So, I, let me, uh, uh, so you treat this as a function of r and theta. Now, both side is a function of r and theta. So, I can differentiate differentiate with respect to r. So, what do we get it on the left side? This is a, if I differentiate with respect to r, you get f prime that variable r e power i theta and I am differentiating this one that will be e power i theta equal to. So, I want to differentiate u with respect to r, okay, u r plus i v r d u by d yeah, so let me I have not used this notation d u by d r plus i d v by d r as a function of theta. So, I want to, so I uh, treat this as a function of r and theta, okay. And now I differentiate with respect to theta. So, only here it will change because I am viewing u as a function of r and theta and v is a function of r and theta. So, and r and theta are independent variable. Now, if I differentiate uh, with respect to theta, r e power i theta into, I have to differentiate with respect to theta. So, r will remain as it is, 
if I differentiate this, we'll get it r e power i theta, and then theta will give you i. So I will get du by d theta plus i dv by d theta. Okay, so I have that one. Now we create this equation. This is common here, so I can replace this here. So I will get it. That implies my du by uh, you will get here. I can replace this e power i theta here. Okay, if I f prime of r e power is common here with i r, so you will have i r into du by dr plus i dv by dr is equal to du by d theta plus i dv by d theta. Equating real and imaginary parts, equating real and imaginary parts. What do you get it? So let's do that. So what is your real part? It is dv by dr because i into i square is minus one. So imaginary parts. What you get it? If I equate imaginary parts, this is my imaginary part. R du by dr. R du by dr is equal to imaginary part is dv by d theta. So du by dr is equal to one over r into dv i am writing in the same format earlier also if you recall in terms of x and y you got du by dx is equal to dv by dy so except this factor so you don't forget again so this is additional factor coming here and now equate the other one real part this is the imaginary part so you will get your du by d theta du by d theta will be equal to I will bring a minus sign and then there is an R, you take it, uh, okay, du by dr is 1 by r, yeah, uh, yes, there is a R, check this, I think it is correct dv by d. So you have this equations. <sighs> dv by dr, if you want it in this form, you can write it du by dr is equal to 1 over r dv by d theta and du by d theta is equal to r dv by dr. So with a minus sign, because there will be a minus sign here, so this is correct. Okay. So keep that in mind, it is the same format du by dx, du by dy, so du by dr, du by d theta. The only factors you have to take is n sign preserved, so you have a minus sign here. So you have, if you want to write it in terms of dv by dr, you write 1 no, minus 1 by r into du by d theta. So this is called the polar form of a, so it is interesting to know the polar form of coordinate, uh, Cauchy Riemann equation, because you have seen various examples sometimes working with polar coordinates would be much more easier than working with uh, uh, Cartesian coordinates. According to which one is more comfortable, you have to use it. Okay, now I want to introduce another concept. So today we are introducing various concepts. These are all part of analytic functions. So next concept which I am going to introduce to you what is called a harmonic functions. Harmonic functions. Okay. So I, let me introduce you the notations, harmonic operator. Okay. A two variable function, a two real variable function, two real variable function u equal to u of x y which is a real value this is really okay. Okay. is called harmonic called harmonic if 
d square u by dx square. You would have seen in physics and other places a plenty of applications of such operator. Okay. This is equal to 0. Okay. So, we have a notation. This is a notation. Probably the engineers do not use much. The one notation which uh, generally the mathematicians use is called Laplacian. This notation is called Laplacian. And this is uh, Laplacian is equal to this operator d square by dx square plus d square by dx square. Okay. So, this operator arises in plenty of applications including engineering and science. You would have seen this operator thing. But engineers use another notation because this I can also write it as, as a vector form. This is a d by dx. I am right working with operators. Okay. If you can think that exactly working like the d by dx. This is the dot product d by dy. You can write it in the operator thing. And this is called a grade operator. This is a grade dot grade. Okay. So, the, what, so what is the, this is grade operator. This is a Laplacian operator. This is a grade operator grade. You see you know it. You can do it in three dimensions and higher dimensions as well. This is, so this is a vector given. So the grade will act on a scalar to produce a vector. And Laplacian will act on a scalar to produce a scalar. And you have a divergence operator which acts on a, uh, a vector to give a scalar. You know all these properties. Eh? And this is used by engineers like this. Okay. So you can use whichever notation you want it. So, a function u is harmonic that is that is Laplacian of u equal to 0 you see or grade square u equal to 0 all are same okay these are all different notations so do not get confused when you read different books some books they use this notation for the thing whatever it is this is the operator this operator is equal to 0, then you call it a, a harmonic functions. Not all functions are harmonic. Say for example, if I take examples, examples and exercises, that is the only way to study mathematics. If I take u x y is any first order operator, a x plus b y, that immediately implies d, d square u by d x square equal to 0 because once I differentiate once I get a second time if I differentiate I get 0. Similarly, d square u by dy square that implies Laplacian of u equal to 0. But I try to work with the second order equation some second order equation may be fine if I work with a u x y is equal to a x square plus b y square a and b are scalars then I get this u by dx is equal to 2ax and d square u by dx square is equal to 2a, d square u by dy square is equal to 2b. Therefore, that implies my Laplacian of u is equal to 2 into a plus b. That implies, la, that implies Laplacian of u equal to 0 only when b equal to minus a. In particular, implies in particular u x y equal to x square minus y square is harmonic, but u x y equal to x square plus y square is not harmonic. Okay. That is another example. But not that it, it is because of second degree it is not harmonic. But if I do u x y is equal to x y, then that implies my Laplacian of u, d square u by dx square is what? d u by dx is equal to y which is a constant y. So, d square u by dx square will be 0. So, this is 0 implies u is harmonic. One of the really most important harmonic function is the next one. 
So, I will leave it this as an exercise, but I can't tell you its importance, but it apply, comes in a many, many applications, what we call it fundamental solution of Laplacian. So, since that is not a topic to be discussed here, and so you consider this operator u x y, because this is not harmonic, but so you can have logarithm of square root of x square plus y square. You may think that y all taken that way, but then as I said, this is a very, very important function which is harmonic. So, verify this. So, this is a simple verification because you know how to compute d u by d x, d square u by d x square, you can also compute d square u by d y square and all that. So, okay. so, you have harmonic functions, not harmonic functions. For example, again x cube plus y cube is not harmonic. At some points you get harmonicity. Of course, this is not harmonic. Uh, uh, it is harmonic when uh, at 0, 0, you are still getting it, but it is not harmonic in r 2 minus 0, 0. So, you can have a one point harmonicity. So, even if I take x cube plus y cube, I will get a 3 x and 3 y. And so, u x y. So, what will happen if I take u x y is equal to x cube plus y cube. So, I get my Laplacian of u. You know how you can compute it. First derivative will give you 3 x square, then it will get 6 x. So, you will get 6 into plus y. That is my u. And this will be 0 when y equal to x. So, you will have this, you will get harmonicity y equal to minus x. Along this line, you have harmonicity, not on other points. Not in no other points, you get harmonicity. So, you can construct plenty of harmonic functions. Okay. So, what is this to do? So, this looks like an entirely different thing. So, after analyticity, I have proved the uh, polar form of Cauchy Riemann equations because you already seen the Cauchy Riemann equations and its power. And then I have defined something entirely different, what is harmonicity. But harmonicity is closely related to analytic functions. That is what the relation between. In fact, harmonic functions has the many properties of analytic functions. Though you will not get to see all that uh, uh, complicated things in this lecture, but let me tell you one thing regarding the connection to harmonic functions. Okay. That is coming again from because harmonicity, differentiability, everything is equivalent to Cauchy Riemann equations. So, everything has to come from harmonic function, uh, from Cauchy Riemann equations. So, let us do what I want to tell you now. So, you have seen plenty of functions. So, let me do uh, suppose f equal to suppose f equal to u plus i v is uh, analytic, analytic that implies Cauchy Riemann equations, implies Cauchy Riemann equations. Okay. So, uh, I want to understand uh, these real and imaginary parts. I want to understand my Laplacian of u. Laplacian of u is equal to d square u by dx square plus d square u by dy square. That is equal to, I will write d by dx of du by dx plus d by dy of du by dy. Right. So, I will write use Cauchy Riemann equations. By using Cauchy Riemann equations, du by dx is equal to dv by dy. Okay. So, this is nothing but d square u by dx dy. You see? And then let us look at what happens here d by dy and du by dy is equal to minus dv by dx. So, that minus comes here and then you get it dv by dx. Now, you see this is d square 
v this is not u this is u this is d square v by dx dy this is d square v by dy dx and these two things are equal when you have the proper difference you have already the differentiability continuity and all that property so this is equal to zero similarly laplace of v is also equal to zero you can write in similar way you get in terms of v replace use the cauchy riemann equations and you get your equal to zero what does this prove an immediate theorem if f is analytic if is analytic in in a region omega in omega then the real and imaginary part then the real and imaginary parts imaginary parts are harmonic that's a very as i said the uh, though you may not get to see here when you study partial differential equations or something like that it has lot of properties the harmonic functions have lot of properties which is so that means all that properties are true for f so in fact a harmonic functions you will see at the last lecture next lecture the harmonic functions determine your analytic functions basically in some sense and it gives you a method to construct analytic functions okay and so that means when you have an analytic functions this cannot be very arbitrary you cannot choose some arbitrary u and v as two real valued functions in two, uh, two real valued functions in the variable x and y and you cannot expect this to be analytic so this is a necessary condition an analytic function then its real and imaginary parts have to be harmonic so if you start with a, a function to variable function and then looking for a v in such a way that uh, uh, i think unless it is harmonic you cannot construct it so that is hopeful whether we can do it or not is a secondary thing that yes, and what we are going to see is that once you have a one harmonic function you can determine the other so there is is something like an interrelated you cannot have because of the equations because of the cauchy riemann equations it cannot be something very arbitrary so this is a powerful thing which i you have to know it and there are results about harmonic functions uh, something one of the important thing is that mean value property and i don't think that you will see in this course or even you may not see in the next module but one of the powerful thing is its uh, mean value property because you can determine the value of a, if you have a harmonic function you can determine a value by averaging it you see you can just average away from that or you can average here and by averaging you will be able to produce your value at that end. that's what is called a mean value property so it has a very powerful mean value property one more definition in this if a if f is analytic in the entire c f is analytic in the entire plane in the full plane full complex plane c then f is called an entire function then f is called an entire function entire function okay you already seen some examples e power z are all entire functions all polynomials okay so polynomials 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 e power z sin z cos z or all entire functions or entire functions okay 1 over z is not an entire function not an entire function and 3 sin z by z 
looks like it is not an entire function can make it an entire function can f z equal to sin z by can make it as an end, can entire function entire function by defining so you are defining appropriately by defining f0 is equal to 1 so you can sometimes do that such functions are basically called the as i said called the removable singularity the singularity can be removed by appropriately defining a suitable value if you define any other value you don't get it at entire function and if you want to do that uh, thing you can make it an entire function so there are you can do that okay but this is a entire function you cannot define any value at the origin to make it an entire function this already has an entire function. so certain functions you cannot make it as an entire function but certain functions you can make it as an entire function so i will uh, stop here and then what i am going to do is that how to construct an analytic function using this property of harmonicity and i will also introduce to you a somewhat a similar but there's slightly an easy and elegant way of uh, constructing analytic function if real or imaginary parts are given if one of them are is given and other function can be determined uh, up to a constant in a more uh, unique way i will do that one and if i get little more time i have uh, 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 two more small sections maybe not be part of your course if i get time in the next lecture i'll present that thank you